This is CUNY TV, the City University of New York. Hello, I'm Ronnie Eldridge. Welcome to Eldridge and Company. The United States, believe it or not, does not guarantee paid sick leave to employees or paid leave to families, including to women for maternity leave. That makes us one of three countries in the world not to do so. Even Afghanistan, Iraq, and Iran do it. Can you believe that? Martha Baker is a tireless activist on behalf of women and girls and a leading voice in efforts to ensure financial security for working people and their families, and my guest today. Good for you. I mean, you are, and you, you never run out of energy and commitment to do these things. Well, there's so much to do. It's I only incredible. wish there was no more to do. <laughs> I know. I'd be happy to sit home. Now, the family leave and, what, a medical leave that's from 93 or something, the Congress, this, 1993. This year, on February 5th, will be the 20th anniversary of the Family Medical Leave Act passed by Clinton as his first act as president. It's, but it, it, it was a very good act in those days. Yes. But it was only for unpaid leave, right? Absolutely. And now the, the drive is to paid leave. But it's such, it's such a sensible thing because there are now half of the families with two parent, half of the two parent families are, are working. That's both right. Both of them. There is no longer anyone at home that one can count on to take care of somebody, whether it means a parent that has to be hospitalized or settled somewhere else, or a child that has an ongoing illness, not a two days home with the flu. That is the difference between family leave and sick days. Sick days is a short-term thing. Family leave enables you to take longer. If you have had a child, and you want that time for bonding or adopted a child, and you need that time for bonding, which all the studies tell us is so important to the well-being of the child as well as the mother. Right. These, this would allow us to do it, and having it unpaid is entirely unrealistic. How many people can afford to be out of work and not receive their remuneration? It, and because, especially because women aren't working just for the joy of it. They're supplying very needed income. Absolutely. Something like almost half of the women who work, or I mean, they contribute more than almost half, half of the family income. Correct. So it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. It's, it's back into the category of no child care and nothing, right? That's right. But this and is so even closer to home. This, this will be the move this year. We have a national movement trying to move the country toward this, as you said, only three countries in the world do not have it's, this. It's beyond belief. Right. I mean, we think of ourselves as leaders, forward thinkers, and we're lagging far behind. Do you remember the, the three countries that don't? They're insignificant. Yes. I mean, well, I don't mean to say they're insignificant. Well, there's Papua New Guinea. Uh, there is, um, oh, God, now I, I can't remember. think of it. I don't know. It used to be Lesotho, but even they passed yeah. it. Uh, I, I just I, can't I remember can't the remember other them. Two. Yeah, but, but, it, but there's three very small... small Poor. Swaziland is Swaziland. one of them. Yes. Yeah. Not, not countries that would immediately come to mind. Right. Uh, but even the Congo of, has. That's right. That's right. It's just, it's an incredible kind of thing. And it's a commentary, I guess, on the fact that family structure is not at the heart of public policy. That is absolutely correct. We talk about, we have a good game, a good talking game about how important families are. But we do nothing to support them. I spent years training women for good jobs, and I found that after they got into the good jobs, they couldn't keep them because we have no structures to support them once they're working. What is it that will enable a, a person to either take time out for a sick child or for a, an ill parent, or if your child breaks their leg or has an an appendectomy and it's more than two days. I mean, you can't continue working 
and yet we penalize people, women primarily, but men as well. We penalize them if they have to take this time because everything is unpaid if you're fortunate enough to be given the time. So you either have no pay or you run the risk of losing your employment. So what is the benefit to the economy? We're not helping Anybody. business and we're not helping the overall economy and we're certainly not benefiting the family unit. It's astonishing to me, but even something like an Equal Rights Amendment to the, the Constitution, that wouldn't do that though, still. No, no, because this is something that's needed by men and women. Even though we know women still have the primary care responsibilities in family, either as single-headed households or even in two-person families, they're the ones usually who have the, the responsibility. So women would use something like this even more, but men need it just, just as... I mean, if the woman is the major wage earner and the man wants to stay home with the kids, then he stay or a child, and he stays home, and they don't get paid his half, and then we're, we're cut Same the thing. income in half. That's right. And then we go from We've there. heard the stories where people either weigh who has the biggest income or who has the best health insurance, and that's how we make decisions. Should that be the way we make decisions in this country? And so we see a movement nationally. We have a national organization called Family Values at Work, and we have a number of states who are part, almost 20 states now, who are part of this effort, both moving paid sick days or paid family Not leave. Not states, but people in the states trying to move right, the states. Right, exactly. But we have learned over the years that often to get the federal government moving, action needs to take um, place local. in the states. And so once you have uh, a sizable number of states involved, it kind of moves the national agenda. And so that's what we're doing here in New York. Good. <laughs> so we've got both the city, though, and the state. Yes, there's two separate campaigns. In the city, we have a bill before the city council called the New York City Paid Sick Days. Now, the Paid Sick Days Act. And that is an earned time that one would earn as a, an employee based on number of hours worked that every employer would have to provide to their employees. The bill as it reads now would be for any employer with five or more people. Not very radical. Hardly radical. It would cost them but pennies. And the only people opposing this bill are those businesses that already have the benefit. I must say it is a question of haves and have-nots. It's like the tale of two cities again. We've seen it before and we're seeing it played out in the Paid Sick Days campaign where we have a majority of the city council supporting it, one member, the key member, the speaker, opposing it, and therefore the bill has not come up for a vote. It's not that it's lost, it's that we haven't been able to vote, vote on it. it. But she says it's going to hurt small businesses. Now, don't you get tired of hearing that excuse? I and sure do. <laughs> I sure do. Be when we know it's not true, we've got economists ad nauseum writing papers. They wrote her letters showing how this is not the case and that, in fact, it would level the playing field for businesses because some good businesses already provide it. Wouldn't this allow everyone to be equal then? Yeah. You know, there's a, there was that whole debate in the presidential election. The definition of a small business in everybody's mind is what? The little guy at the corner. Right. But it's not. It could be the hedge fund operator over there. Exactly. It's amazing because it's based on the what? The number, the, the amount of money or is well, it? Well, in some cases, it's the amount of money. The way we've viewed it is the amount of employees. So in order to accommodate the mom and pop shops in New York, we have eliminated the under five employee businesses from paid sick days, but their employees would have to, they would have to provide unpaid, but job protected time. So that means if you take the time off, you still have your job when you come exactly. back. Exactly. And the, fam the, the national legislation does that. That was the basic well, point. Well, there, no, there is no national legislation on sick days. It's only on family leave. Oh, it's only leave. on family leave. Now, we have paid sick days already in the city of of right. uh, San Francisco. Oh, no. Oh, the cities that have passed Municipal right. workers Washington, all have this. Washington, D.C.? Washington, D.C. has it. The state of Connecticut passed such yeah. a bill. 
last year. And the, is it Seattle or the state of Washington? The Seattle, the state of Washington has a family yeah. leave bill. Seattle has a paid sick days bill. And that's what we're hoping to do in New York, have a paid sick days bill in the city of New York. In the state of New York, we have what's called family leave insurance bill. I want to come back to that in a minute, okay. but let's go. The, 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 the sick time, it's, it's like at one point, uh, one and a half million people who aren't covered with it? 1.3 million workers who are not covered. Who are not covered. But and as some of these workers, or a lot of these workers, are working in food place with exactly. food. Exactly, exactly. So this kind of bill encourages them to come to work when they're sick, right? Well, they do. And they do come to work. They do because either they're threatened with the loss of their job. Many of them can't get a, along without the loss of their pay. They're threatened with the loss of their shift. So this hangs over their heads. And it's also for people working in hospitals or any kind of place where there is a connection to people who are Those, vulnerable to this right. disease. Those who are not only vulnerable themselves, but in turn are in a position to spread illness throughout the population are the ones who need it the most and who don't have it. So that's really the main thing, isn't it, for sick leave? Because that's right. it's up to... How long is it for? Is it's it time to five, determine? Well, it's five days. Five days and Originally, five, the bill was five more. employees in five days. Right. Five days. What is five days over a year's time? Do the unions have, who have contracts, do they have sick leave? Yes, they do. And they, even though they already have it, almost all of them, not everyone, some of the unions are a little different. They have collective bargaining agreements. but. Almost all the unions who already have this are tremendously supportive of this effort, even though it doesn't directly impact their workers, because they know it impacts other workers who need it. And in fact, it impacts the entire city. I ride the subway. I go to a, a place to pick up coffee. Right. You go into a bodega or even into a department store mm -hmm. where many of the retail workers are not children covered. Children go to school sick because right. the mother is working and there's also no child care, right? That's right. So anyway, now the state. How depressing. <laughs> it is, it really yes. is. Yes. It's, it's basically shocking. It's very good though, because it's really defining and um, designing a whole new framework for looking at these issues. I must say, Gloria Steinem said it right. She said, this is the women's issue for the 21st century. Right, right. absolutely. And it is. We can't maintain working and family without having these benefits built in to our lives. Which we saw basically at the ending of the, of the presidential campaign. Right. The polarization between Obama and Romney. Right. Yeah. Tremend made a tremendous difference. Yeah. And I think it awakens in people the notion that, yes, of course we need this. How many people in the city think everyone has paid sick days? I've talked to doctors who told me, mm. well, of course everyone has it. Why? Yeah. How could we operate as a city and not have that? It would be time for us to stop talking about taxes and to start talking about human services <laughs> instead think. of cutting the programs right. we should be doing. Well, we know that, but some people don't yet. Tell us, now let's talk about the state. Okay. The state, we are one of five states in the country that has what is called temporary disability insurance. That means that if you are sick or injured off the job and you are a worker, you are entitled to a certain number of weeks off from work at a very low level of pay. The last time that level was changed was 1989. The highest amount that you could earn is $170 a week. Hardly enough for anyone to live on. Is there a limit of time? Yes. There is a 12-week program for temporary disability insurance. But you can't qualify for it if it's five days? No, it has to be longer than that, longer than a week. So it's similar to workers' compensation, mm. except that's for on the job. This is for off the job. Now what we're talking about is trying to couple family leave insurance as an insurance program with temporary disability 
Therefore, we have a state apparatus. We would not be creating something new. There would be a lot less expense, and it's no cost to the employer. This would be paid for by the employee, and it is but pennies. We've had 26 cents a week estimated that it would cost. So it's all about allowing workers the time to either care for themselves or a family member. That's the other distinction. When you have temporary disability, it's for you and you alone. But if I have a child, as my daughter did when she was younger, with a broken leg, and she was nine years old, I couldn't leave her home alone, I had to take that time off. If I had or you had an ill parent that needed to be either hospitalized or be cared for at home so that they wouldn't have to go in a nursing home or a rehab facility, which would cost much more, we, if we have this time, we could meet our immediate family needs, still retain our jobs, be the worker that's grateful to the employee, employer mm -hmm. because you have that job to come back to. So where does money come from to go into the fund? Well, as an insurance program, in temporary disability, it's shared with employer and employee. For family leave insurance, the way the bill is written, it would be covered entirely by the employee. And for every poll we've done in the state, it's overwhelmingly supported by Democrats and Republicans, men and women, because of the benefit that affords for pennies. And why is it not a law? Well, we've brought it up to the state a few times, and because we've had some major mishaps in our state government, we've had Governor Spitzer was very supportive of it, Governor Patterson was supportive of it. Different things occurred in the state, and it never went through. Last year, we brought it up again, and we had a Republican sponsor in the Senate and a Democrat in the Assembly. The Republican sponsor has now lost his re-election bid. So we will now have a new sponsor in the Senate, and we have support of the state AFL, CIO. We've got support of health organizations around the country, organizations that focus on maternity and child care. Of course, the women's organizations around the state are all supporting this. And hopefully, we can get the governor's support. I was going to say, are forward. you telling us that the governor has not yet supported the legislation? Not yet, although we are working with his office, and so I wouldn't rule it out. And I have heard his mother say on occasion <laughs> that she thinks that this is a very important law that we should have. So maybe that will influence him. <laughs> and how, who's going to uh, sponsor it in the Senate? Can it be a Democrat who's decided to join the Republican, the, this fusion caucus? Well, it will probably be Senator Adabo, who's been very supportive of this in the past. But he's not a Republican. He is a Democrat. Oh, but it can be supported by two Democrats. Yes. But we want the Republican support. Yes, but we want Republican support, which is not always easy in bills But Republicans of this always talk about family. Yes, they do. And this should not be a Democrat or Republican issue. I mean, there's nothing to say who's going to get sick or who needs this help for a parent. It has nothing to do with party affiliation. So the city, I mean, the state would rather have an older person put on Medicaid in a nursing home that cause, costs how much more, 80% more? Oh, tremendous difference. Than pay, paid leave to a, parent, to a, woman, a working person, person whose parent needs some help. Yeah, that shows you sense. how crazy we are, huh? Right. So we're hoping to convince them otherwise. Are you doing We have a great coalition, good. fabulous coalition. The New York Civil Liberties Union is one of our main partners. A Better Balance, the New York Paid Leave Coalition, Community Service Society, and all these Public Health Association of New York, all these health groups around the state, uh, Winning Beginning, which is maternity and child care, and, mm. you know, it's just wonderful groups. So let's go back now, because we've figured out how to finance the uh, state. The city means that the employer has to pay five days of salary. That's right. And that's not the end of the world. That's correct. Because in many cases, depending on the work site, other employees pick up the slack. We've all seen that where a coworker is out and oh. sometimes they don't even add somebody. Certain businesses, you must have a person there. We understand that. Other businesses, people 
just, you know, for Suppose two days they can get by. If it's a McDonald's franchise, is it McDonald's or it's the franchise? I'm it's franchise. the franchise, yeah. I'm sorry to say, yes. Yeah. And we are dealing with some, through our partner at Rock New York and through Make the Road, another partner of ours, uh, we're dealing with small businesses as well as franchises. It's interesting. To try to move them forward. But we, we have found out through work done by the IWPR, the Institute for Women's Policy Research in DC, and through Community Service Society's work and research, that the city of New York would save $39.5 million by having paid sick days because people who don't have it use emergency rooms oh, that's when the they're not thing. working. Right, after hours. Correct. So they go Even to work. Even if they have health insurance, they can't access it. Because the doctors aren't being there. So they go to work sick, spread the germs, and then go to the emergency room at night yeah. and charge. And not only spreading it to the public at large, but how about the coworkers? Why would this be a good idea for business not to have this? Now you've got more than one worker sick in no time. We come up with a wall when it comes to businesses that the, it's, it's such a myth that all of these services hurt the businesses because, I mean, years ago, we worked on childcare. Right. Where we wanted businesses to provide them child. Oh, you can't do that. It, I mean, it doesn't, it really doesn't make some sense. No, it goes on and on. Look, you know, child labor laws, minimum wage fights. It keeps, everything is gonna be the final straw. There'll be no business in the city of New York. <laughs> I mean, it's so absurd. Yeah. It's, but the city, unfortunately, is becoming more and more for rip wealthier people, so yes. it's losing, great some of it, losing some of its soul sometimes, or in danger of doing yeah. so. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. just really One of depressing. my favorite things is finding out how people, what, what happened in somebody's life to make you do the kind of work you do. <laughs> well, it was, happen? it was a progression of things. It was my interest in politics, and primarily my interest in women doing politics. So when you grew up, your parents were active? They weren't active, but they were very political at home. Yeah. So politics of the civil rights movement, of the anti-McCarthy movement, oh, that was discussed at our dinner table. I mean, that was part of our growing up. And then I was active in high school even, in civil rights, in college and political movements. And um, then when I had a child, I, we went to the theater one night and saw Joseph Heller in the bombed in New Haven about draft boards. And we left the theater and I said to my husband, this is it, I am not waiting till my child is 18. I am now gonna work full time in the peace movement. And I went and got involved with Women's Strike for Peace and met Bella Abzug and it was a great took training, over my life. Great training job, right? Yes. You know, we differ so because, I mean, I'm older than you, but it's similar g generations. Did we need terrible things around us to generate the activity? And that mm, we thought. recent now, in the last, what, 20, I don't know how many years, you know, we really haven't had that. I mean, we've been in Iraq in a war we didn't like, but we didn't have the draft, right? That's right. Uh, well, that's how We got over Watergate, but right. Watergate had a more of a dampening effect than it did having a... I, I guess I could point to the anti-nuclear movement. I was very active in the anti-nuclear movement, anti-nuclear war. Mm -hmm. And then we turned our sights to anti-nuclear, after weapons, mm -hmm. became the power plants. Mm -hmm. And when Jimmy Carter became president, everybody thought, well, now we don't need this anymore. And people, like, take a step back. Just when Clinton became president, they thought, well, look, it's, we've got some new women in the yeah. Congress. Isn't that okay? Right. But it's never okay because these are little incremental steps we've made. Right. We never quite achieve what we set out to achieve. The only people who did were the Tea Party people. Yes. Who then gained control of state legislatures. And we Correct. see what that's doing to the unions and everything else. And yeah. union life has changed. Very much so. It's really, uh, it's, it's scary when you look out there. I mean... When I go to national meetings and I hear what's going on in other states, I mean, we think it's hard for unions in New York. And you look at other states, look what they've gone through in, in, in Wisconsin, now what they're going through in, Ohio, in Michigan. In Ohio. Michigan trying to become yes. a right-to-work state. Michigan with a UAW and the heritage it has. Right. 
Right. And I see the struggle they have in the state of Georgia. Uh, it's just scary. I don't know how we can expect working people to maintain themselves and care for families when we don't provide living wages and benefits that it takes to live a decent life. They're not asking for the moon. And part of it was the welfare reform issue because you lost compassion, right? We lost an issue about poor people or working class people. Yes. And we have that atmosphere around us that we don't care about. There's no community. No, and the discussion is always middle class, middle class, yeah. middle class. Yeah. Well, if you listen to Tavis Smiley and some of the work that he's done moving around the country talking about poverty issues, it's true. Nobody wants to go there. There's no discussion. And we know it. how easy it is to go from middle class to poverty. It only takes a couple of paychecks, yeah. and that's it. Yeah. So do you have suggestions about um, websites for people to go to to learn? Yes. Several things. Yes. People can go to Time to Care NYC and find out about our family leave insurance and our paid sick days campaign. Oh, good. So if you go, if you just even Google paid sick days NYC, you will come to a website that we, the whole campaign supports. Nationally, we have Family Values at Work, which is an excellent website, and we'll show you what's going on in the other states. Also, A Better Balance, where I am on the board, I must say, and one of our, our partners, and they are the, the Work Family Legal and Advocacy Center. They have an excellent website with all of these issues on it, as does the Time to Care, which is our New York Paid Leave Coalition. Thank you, Martha Baker, for coming and for being so diligent and such a wonderful activist to make well, these things happen. Thank you, Ronnie, thank you. for carrying on, <laughs> keeping on, no, and allowing on. <laughs> all of us to talk about what yeah. we do. Yeah, thanks. If there are any people you'd like to hear and topics you'd like us to explore, please let me know. You can write to me at CUNY TV, 365 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10016. Or you can go to the website at cuny.tv and click on Contact Us. I look forward to hearing from you.